This is Twit. We made the trek from Petaluma down to Redwood City to check out Skydio's awesome technology, truly autonomous drone technology, and we're going to put it to the test. We're here with CEO and co-founder of Skydio, Adam Bry. How's it going, Adam? Good. Good to be here. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Tell us about the R1 and kind of where you've come from, from the Founders Edition, to where you're at right now. Really exciting time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the basic idea for the company and the product is pretty simple. Like We think drones have enormous potential across a bunch of different industries and applications, uh, but it seems like the thing that's really going to make all that stuff work is full autonomy. Like You need to be able to trust the device to fly itself, um, which is a very simple concept, but it's an extremely challenging thing to deliver on, and that's what we've been focused on since we've got started. Um, so I have an R1 uh, with us here today. This has been designed for full autonomy from the ground up, so it has 13 cameras on it. It has two facing in every direction. So you can see the pair on the top, each of the sides, there's also two on bottom, um, and then this is the user video camera out front. So, you know, we have a bunch of sensing in every direction, and then we have a super powerful computer in here as well. This is the NVIDIA TX1 computer, um, but the real magic is, of course, in the software. We call it the Skydio Autonomy Engine, um, and it's really this incredibly sophisticated system that processes information from all the cameras, it understands the environment around it, so it knows the 3D structure, it knows semantic information, so it knows people, cars, sky, stuff like that. Um, and then it uses all that information to make intelligent decisions. So it's a very sophisticated device, but the goal for it, like the end product experience, is super simple. It's basically like a film crew that fits into your backpack. So um, one big difference here, uh, I think, with a lot of other drone manufacturers, drone products, is that you're not shipping this with a controller. You pulled out your smartphone. Tell us a little bit about the, the, the uh, kind of the idea to do that. You've got a lot of confidence that this thing can do what it does with just a smartphone. Yeah, exactly. So it's the kind of thing that would only make sense if you can trust the drone to fly Absolutely. itself. Absolutely. Um, and one of our big design goals here is to make it so that if you're comfortable using the camera app on your phone, you should be able to comfortably use this to capture amazing footage. So you can take off from your hand, um, and it's smart enough to know if it's safe to take off. So for yeah. example, if I point it over at you here, it'll say Hi. obstruction ahead, so it won't <laughs> let me do it. Um, Good, thank you. Thank yeah, you. and to Appreciate test that. this out, uh, we have Nicole, who leads our flight testing team. Hi, Nicole. So she is used to pushing the vehicle to the limits. Yeah. So I just swipe up to take off. Starts to spin. Whoa! Now, what is it programmed to do at this very moment? Is this programmed to kind of step out and point yeah. towards us and, and yeah, kind so of it, lock it, onto us? Exactly. So it took off from her hand, so it knows to start tracking her. Um, so that little orbit symbol there tells us that it's locked onto her. And right now it's in follow mode, which is the default mode. Um, so if she runs around, you can see it starts to track her. Oh, that is neat. That is really cool. And it's tracking through the trees. It's avoiding all of these obstacles automatically, even though yep, that exactly. she's running through them. So if you watch her run around, like it knows where it's safe to fly. It'll weave around the trees. It ducks under everything. Obviously uh, really great for, for sports. Skateboarding. Yeah. yeah, I mean, really any kind of outdoor activity becomes a lot of fun with a drone involved. So, like, hiking, biking, skiing, um, but even stuff just like playing with your kids in your backyard is pretty cool. Yeah. How long can uh, can the R1 stay in the air before having to come down and, I guess, I'm imagining swap out the battery or, or charge it? So, the flight time is about 16 minutes. It depends a little bit on what you're doing. Um, there are a couple of other modes we can show you. So, okay. some yeah. of these are new we're launching today, but I'll first show you lead mode. Um, so in lead mode, it predicts where Nicole is going and it tries to stay in front of her. So, so here we're in lead. So see, she's oh, going yeah. in that direction. And that corrects almost immediately. It like sends, the, sends yeah. the command, the drone gets in place. And yeah, look at that. It's staying right in front of her. When she turns, obviously, it has to do a bigger correction to get back out in front. That is amazing. Yeah, exactly. That is really cool. Here, I'm going to stop following now. I'll show you some of the one shots, which are new things we've created. Um, so we'll tap You can on see the targeting. That's yes, really cool. So we can see the targeting. Yeah. Um, so if I tap on you now, it's following you. Oh dear. And then we're going to do a droney here. So a droney is a pretty fun perspective setting shot. So I'll just tap droney. We get the countdown. Yep. Three, two, one. Ah, yeah, there you go. that is so neat. And so it does the out and then it comes back. Exactly. Back in. now. I'm obviously seeing from my vantage point, you know, it's it's adjusting. It's a little bit of a breeze here, yep. but uh, everything inside of the camera is counterbalancing for that. So you end up with 
pretty still shots as a result, right? Yeah, exactly. There's, there's actually two levels of stabilization, and one of these is new with this software update. So the gimbal is mechanically stabilized. So if you look at the camera out front, it keeps itself level. Yep. But then we also do software stabilization, which is new. Um, so let's do another droney here. All right. So we'll do droney again. And I can actually control the settings. Let's, I say I want to go really far away, um, and I want it to go even faster. Really far away in this case is 262 feet. Wow, and then it kicks in. And there it goes, and hopefully it sees those trees, which it's going to because of all the onboard cameras. Yeah, exactly. So that's one of the keys here. Like these one shots become uh, much more useful if with collision avoidance because you can just do it with complete reckless abandon. Right. Uh, and trust it to avoid obstacles and do whatever it needs to do to make the shot work. So this is obviously the kind of thing that you then do, put out on Instagram or something like yeah, that so everybody yeah. can marvel at exactly. <laughs> what so, you can do. Yeah, it's, it's super fun. It basically creates these just like perfect Instagrammable shots. So the other thing that's pretty cool is that these will actually keep following you uh, if you move during the one shot. I'm gonna do a rocket. So when you lock to a person, even though it's doing its own pattern, it's still tracking that particular person. So if they move, it continues that pattern, but scales it differently depending on where they are. Exactly. So you'll see it'll shoot up in the air here, but it'll keep looking at her. So here we see it tracking oh, yeah. her. And then when it's done with the rocket, it'll come back down to wherever she is. That is amazing. That is super impressive. And then the other thing we can do, which is new, is called cable cam. So here I can set two positions. Um, so I'll say that's a position and then fly over here. Do like a manual control to reposition it somewhere. And say that's the B position. Um, oh, it's like a tracking shot. Exactly. And so I click go and it'll smoothly go back and forth between those two shots, um, which can make, you can set up, like even with this like really simple primitive, you can get these like amazingly smooth, yeah. cool like landscape kind of stuff. And then if we want, we can set it to follow subject. If I tap on Nicole, so if she moves now, it'll follow her, but it'll stay on that line that I've given it. Wow. And so this becomes really useful. Like if you're filming a soccer game or something, you can set this up on a sideline and it basically gets this sort of perfect yeah. sideline tracking shot. That's exactly. really impressive. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing where like, you know, to create something like this previously, you'd be talking about a film crew with yep. like a dolly and a bunch of equipment, and this is literally like three taps on an app. The idea, I mean, obviously we have technology that allows us to do this now. You're demonstrating that. Would you say that creators are like your number one kind of target for this technology? It's creators, filmmakers, that sort of thing? I think that's definitely a major category for us. Like, we think of this as really a new kind of camera. Like, yeah. it's a camera that you don't have to point and control yourself. It's a camera that controls itself. And we think, you know, athletes, people who do interesting, cool stuff outside, that's a major use case and, and customer group for us. And then also creative people who have this idea of this kind of shot and want to be able to create content. Um, but being able to do that without having to hire and run a whole crew uh, is, is super, super powerful. We're running a bit low on battery here, so I'll stop tracking her and then I can click return to phone now here. It's using my phone's GPS signal to come back into the general area. So GPS oh. isn't accurate enough to do super tight following, but it is enough to get it to, to just re return to the general vicinity. When the R1 knows that it's about to run out of battery and you as the operator don't do anything specifically, uh -huh. does it automatically come over and land uh, before it knows it's about to run out entirely? Yeah, so it, um, we have a couple layers of intelligence built in, so it sure. detects when the battery is running low, it'll let you know that on the phone, um, and then if the battery gets too low, it'll land itself, and it has an intelligent landing mode where it'll look for a flat place mm -hmm. to, that it thinks it's safe to, to touch down. One thing I really, really like about what you guys are doing here, and we, we kind of briefly mentioned it earlier, is this idea that regular software updates that bring mm -hmm. major features, right? Like yeah. this, you initially released the Frontier Edition in February. You had a very major software update that happened in May. That brought a bunch of uh, new functionality. Yeah. And now, of course, the, the new announcement, it brings a whole host of, of other things. Yep. Like that just seems to open up the door for like unlimited kind of expandability exactly. down the line. It's a great, that's a great way to, to approach this. Yeah, exactly. It's really a, a software defined experience. And with the hardware, um, we've built something that is capable of doing all the sensing and compute you need, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, the software defines what the device, uh, what the device does, which is really extremely exciting. So, you know, the new capabilities we're announcing today 
we think are really cool and open up a lot of new use cases. And then, as you mentioned, there's there's kind of this infinite expandability aspect to that. And so we're also excited to be announcing an SDK, which we think is an enormously powerful thing because it takes all of the problems we've solved in autonomous navigation and makes the solutions to those available for developers uh, to create whatever kind of behavior they want. So to enable that, we have a web simulator environment. Um, so it's actually all based in the browser and you can just go to um, our developer console, create your, your skill. It's, it's all done in Python. Um, to, you know, a few hundred lines of Python, you can create some incredibly powerful stuff. You can test it out in Sim in the browser, and then you can very easily deploy it to your vehicle or a set of vehicles that you want. All right, you ready? Come on. And another part of this also is the mobile aspect, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you obviously you have a great app to kind of control all this stuff, but mm -hmm. that's opening up as well, right? Yeah, there are some use cases, and I think this is especially true on the commercial side, where let's say you want to do roof inspection. Um, you know, there's a particular interface and workflow that's going to be best for roof inspection, and that's a mobile-defined experience. So if people want, in addition to writing their own skills that run on board, they can create their own mobile app to interface. Um, and, and, you know, we expect that, especially in the commercial space, this is going to be a really powerful thing where people mm -hmm. can create their own enterprise workflows using our core system. but completely done in whatever way makes the most sense for their customers. Can you share like maybe one or <laughs> one or two kind of interesting ideas that they've come up with that, that maybe you're looking forward to? Yeah, so I think there's a few different buckets of, of use cases, all of which are pretty exciting to us. There's a ton of stuff that kind of revolves around inspection, being able to put a camera at a specific point in space in a reliable, precise way without worrying about it crashing. And I think that covers um, everything from like residential roofs mm -hmm. to large commercial spaces to energy infrastructure, so like oil pipelines, power plants, cell towers, stuff like that, um, wind farms. So there's a lot of interest in all these areas, and some of it is working today with manually flown products, um, but it's a lot more cumbersome than, than you'd want it to be. And the vision here is that it's basically like push button autonomy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you push a button or maybe you don't even push the button, just on regularly scheduled intervals, the drones can go off and, and perform these tasks. And we think that's, you know, that's the core of what we can enable here. And then there's, you know, there's complete other categories of stuff around security. So one of the really cool things is that this product can respond to the environment around it. So you could build an app that looks for particular types of objects. If it sees it, it could track those and catalog them. Uh, and then there's also, I think, a lot of cool consumer app-oriented stuff to be done. You could imagine building something that was great for filming soccer games mm -hmm. and knew how soccer games work and knew the right angles so that your kid's, your kid's soccer game could be produced as if it was on ESPN. Um, and I think one of the things that's exciting for us is we just see enormous opportunity basically in every direction to make these things better and smarter and more useful and more use cases. Droning. If you draw analogies to other industries like personal computing or phones, I think we're still in sort of day zero of the industry. Um, and the things that drones can do in one year and two years and five years and 10 years uh, I think will be astounding relative to what's out there today, even in something like this, which is the most advanced product of, of the time. Ah! <laughs> that is awesome. All right, Adam Bry, CEO, co-founder of Skydio. Thank you so much, man. This is yeah. a lot of fun, and I'm so super psyched for you guys. This has been great. Thanks. <laughs> I can't wait to get my own. <laughs>